Antioxidants today, together with polyphenols, are household names. Everybody knows these words. Polyphenols, polyphenols, antioxidants. What is the reason I am criticizing polyphenols, criticizing antioxidants in my book? First of all, if you go to Google and you type antioxidant guilty, there are millions of hits, and the first hit is my book. Because the combination of antioxidant is guilty is very unique among those five million hits because everybody is praising antioxidants. Everybody is crazy about antioxidants. Everybody is loading their bodies with antioxidants. What is the issue with this antioxidants? What are antioxidants? By the very definition, in small quantities, is supposed to protect certain biological molecules inside the body from oxidation. This is what it is. Why is it that they are talking about polyphenols in connection with antioxidants. The reason is that there is a molecule which is called phenol, and there is another molecule which is called vitamin E. Everybody knows vitamin E. Vitamin E happened to be a phenolic compound. So it has that same core structure, and it has also a large number of other, other, other carbons in it. But the chemical structure, which is called the phenolic structure, is the same in a regular phenol and also vitamin E. Now, vitamin E, when it is tested for antioxidant properties, it gives you a positive result. There are many ways how these compounds can be tested. And the standard tests are such, they are measuring so-called redox ability of the aromatic ring. Now, because vitamin E shows the positive test, what was the main paradigm in the research during the last several decades? Scientists are extracting different parts of plants which contain large amount of phenolic compounds. Just by evolution, the plants are loaded with phenolic compounds. After that, they test under standard conditions the way vitamin E is tested. And because of the core structure is the same in vitamin E and in any other phenolic compound, it gives you a positive result. After that, because of this, they conclude that this particular natural extract, which is coming from plant X, is an antioxidant. And after that, they make incredibly dangerous transition by recommending the general public to take that extract in some shiny bottles some shiny labels with some foreign words that average American cannot even pronounce, saying that it will prolong their life. What about vitamin E? Vitamin E is a cleverly designed molecule. There are certain type of reactions on phenolic compounds which convert them into carcinogens. This is coming from the female hormone chemistry. We didn't know about this even 10 or 15 years ago. Now what is now? The female hormone is a carcinogen because it undergoes certain oxidation. As soon as it undergoes specific type of oxidation, I don't want to become too technical, right? It interacts with the DNA molecule. And there are more than 40 structures which have been isolated, which is formed from the core structure interacting with different nucleophilic parts inside the body. Now, vitamin E is not undergoing the same oxidation. Just structurally, it has certain parts. It cannot undergo the same oxidation. This is why, in that sense, vitamin E is safe. But, hundreds of other compounds, which are phenolic compounds, they don't have the same protection over there. And this is shown that they undergo that oxidation, exactly the same oxidation that the female hormone undergoes. Female hormone also is a phenolic compound. So this is the same class, phenolic compound, the phenol itself as a parent molecule, and vitamin E. Plant extracts are never represented by a single molecule. If we inject into the GC, we inject into HPLC, which is the, the high pressure liquid chromatography, 
There are tens of, if not hundreds of ticks. To understand each structure, it takes years and years. Until we understand each structure, we shouldn't advise general public to take these unknown compounds and to consume them because in that standard test, it gives you the positive result. Let me give you another example. There is a molecule that I will be talking about this molecule in connection with red wine and resveratrol and other household names these days. Right. The molecule is called diethyl stilbestrol. Abbreviation is DES or DES. Has been developed in 40s, 50s, last century to treat complications which are related to pregnancy. Until all of a sudden, people realize that thousands of women, they suffered from vaginal and cervical cancer. And it was banned after that. Dietyl stilbestrol. If you take dietyl stilbestrol, which is also a phenolic compound, and you test under the same conditions are vitamin E, because it's phenolic compound, it gives you the positive test. Because that pore structure is over there. What the general public doesn't hear when the popular TV personalities are advertising natural extract as antioxidants, what they don't hear, how many compounds are present? What are the structures of those compounds? Do we know the intimate details of those structures? Do we know what the metabolism is? Now we know that the single compound which going inside the human body can give you a number of derivatives. <coughs> Tamoxifen, which is used for breast cancer treatment these days, one of the widely used therapeutic agents. It converts into seven different compounds inside the female body. Only one of them is needed for its activity. Can you imagine if you don't have tamoxifen, but you have 10 compounds in natural extract going inside the body, can become 17. If we don't know what are the structures of compounds going inside the body, obviously we don't know what are the structural compounds which are formed. Talking about vitamin E, it's another household name as we're talking about. Vitamin E, from viewpoint of that oxidation to carcinogenic compounds, is safe, but, but we have to be very careful with vitamins also. Uh, very often I am asked during the public presentations, is it okay to take multivitamins or not? No. The answer is we should not overload our bodies with vitamins because they are still organic molecules, although they are called vitamins. The latest research on vitamin E on 35,000 men, 35,000 men, over a period of 10 years, these 35,000 men were given 400 international units, it translates into 268 milligrams of vitamin E, to see if it can lower the incidence of prostate cancer. And the results were astonishing, shocking. Stunning, because there was a spike in, in the incidence of prostate cancer by 17%. Wow. So it was tested to see if it will lower the incidence of prostate cancer. 17% is a significant spike. This is once again, it tells us how delicate and precious our bodies are designed over several millennia. Supplementation is an issue which is frequently discussed in the kitchen, around the kitchen table, people are deciding if they need some supplementation or not. And this is about all kinds of supplements, including vitamins. I think the right approach will be, first of all, to see if there is a deficiency inside our bodies. Let's take vitamin D. Vitamin D is incredibly important for our bodies. Right. Instead of loading our body with vitamin D, the right thing to do, first of all, will be to analyze what is the concentration of vitamin D. It's a very easy blood work. You can easily analyze this is the amount of vitamin D. Only if it's below the range where it's supposed to be, it's advisable to take vitamin D. It's 2012. The power of analytical methods that we have today in our possession is unprecedented, unheard of. 
it's, it's easy to determine the concentration of any compound inside the body. So it should be the panel that we should go to the family doctor, say that I would like to see which vitamins are deficient in my body. And a day later, we should learn that we are fine with vitamin D, it would be nice to have some additional vitamin A or vitamin B, etc. Whatever is advised today to general public, just to take certain amount of vitamins can be dangerous because of recent developments. Vitamin, the word vitamin analogous to the word natural was another thing, some sacred thing that we do not want to touch. If it's called vitamin, then there is no way that it can be harmful. All right. Now, let's look at two words, supplement and the drug. Whenever you hear the word drug, the brain chemistry is such that you are alert, you are asking the right questions. What kind of drug is it? What kind of medical condition it can treat? What kind of side effects it has? How long it has been on the market? If there were any recalls, etc., etc. So you are behaving, we are behaving as informed people. As soon as it is called not drug, but this is called supplement. Our, our attitude changes completely. Completely. And instead of asking how many compounds are there, and in fact, there is always a mixture of compounds, to the contrary to a drug, which is a well-defined molecule, usually one or two, well-defined. It took 10, 15 years to get from the laboratory on the shelf in the pharmacy. The government has to step in and require that all kinds of supplements, whatever goes inside our bodies, should be tested exactly the same way the drugs are tested. Only after that we might be positive, more or less, that this is not a toxic compound or this doesn't convert into the metabolite, which will, which will trigger some kind of crippling disease. 